The engine break-in process is arguably the most effective choice for ensuring your engine's longevity and performance. That said, if you don't do it correctly, rather than protecting your engine, you'll end up causing premature wear and potential damage to critical components like piston rings and cylinder walls. Today, I'm going to show you exactly why proper engine break-in matters and the specific mistakes that could be silently destroying your engine right now. Engine break-in isn't just some outdated concept. It's a critical, tribological process where components like piston rings and cylinder walls mate together through controlled friction. During these first few hundred miles, microscopic high spots on metal surfaces wear down to create optimal contact patterns, with proper cylinder pressure being essential for this seating process. Despite what many dealerships might tell you, modern engines absolutely require a break-in period. Approximately 70% of car owners never read their owner's manual, leading to widespread misunderstandings about proper break-in protocols. Many consumers mistakenly assume manufacturers complete this process before vehicles reach them. A dangerous misconception. Let me show you the scientific evidence. Oil analysis from a Toyota Corolla revealed conclusive proof that modern engines are not broken in at the factory. The first oil sample showed 91 parts per million of wear metals per 1,000 miles, while the second sample showed only 9 parts per million, a dramatic 90% reduction in wear rate. This significant decrease in metal particles proves the engine was actively breaking in during those first 500 miles. Specifically, copper content decreased from 40 to 8 parts per million, iron from 13 to 8 parts per million, and aluminum from 13 to 4 parts per million. These numbers don't lie, they demonstrate exactly what's happening inside your engine during those crucial first miles. So why do manufacturers downplay break-in requirements? Two key reasons. First, the rise in vehicle leasing has changed maintenance patterns. When consumers lease rather than buy, they tend to perform less rigorous maintenance. Traditional break-in oils required timely changes to prevent engine sludge. If lessees neglected these changes, engines would develop problems still covered under warranty, creating financial liability for manufacturers. Second, EPA corporate average fuel economy standards have pushed manufacturers toward better fuel efficiency. Modern low-viscosity synthetic oils deliver better fuel economy than traditional break-in oils. Since the EPA tests production vehicles purchased directly from dealerships, manufacturers optimize for these tests prioritizing warranty protection and fuel economy ratings over optimal break-in procedures. This explains the disconnect between what manufacturers recommend and what experienced mechanics consider best practice for engine longevity. Now let's examine the specific mistakes that could be destroying your engine right now. The first critical mistake many new car owners make is believing modern engines don't need any break-in period at all. Historically, engines had rougher machining and looser tolerances, requiring extended break-in to smooth out imperfections. Today's engines are often partly broken in at the factory using dynamometers before delivery, with some high-performance engines receiving complete break-in conditioning. Many contemporary vehicles even have engine management systems that control performance during the initial break-in period, such as the computer-controlled break-in in, in the Corvette and Dodge Demon that limits engine performance until a certain mileage is reached. Despite these advances, most manufacturers still recommend some level of cautious operation initially. The fundamental mechanical principles remain the same. Piston rings need proper seating, but the process is less critical and generally shorter for modern production engines compared to engines from decades past or custom rebuilds. Modern manufacturing techniques, including precision machining and computer-controlled assembly, result in engines with tighter tolerances that require less aggressive break-in than older designs. However, assuming no break-in is needed at all is a serious mistake that can compromise engine longevity. The recommended break-in period varies significantly across sources, but generally ranges from 500 to 1500 miles for new factory engines. Some manufacturers specify their own guidelines which may appear in the owner's manual. The consensus indicates that the first 50 to 100 miles are most critical for any engine as components initially mate and settle. The second major mistake you can make during engine break-in is using cruise control. This seemingly innocent habit maintains constant RPM and engine load, which prevents the varied conditions needed for proper component seating. Active break-in involves specific driving techniques, 
Instead of cruise control, you should vary speeds by 10 to 15 miles per hour regularly to provide beneficial component seating. Modulate throttle input by using gentle accelerations and occasionally downshifting to create diverse load conditions. For manual transmission vehicles, actively shift through all available gears to provide natural variation. Introducing gentle engine braking, allowing deceleration without heavy use of brakes, is also beneficial during break-in. City driving, or back roads, naturally create these varied driving conditions that are ideal for break-in, as they require frequent speed changes, different gear selections, and diverse engine loads. When highway driving is unavoidable, consciously varying speed and occasionally taking exits to incorporate city driving can help achieve proper braking conditions. The key technique involves gradually accelerating to speed and then using engine braking to slow down, creating what mechanics call vacuum poles. These vacuum poles are essential because they create pressure that pushes the piston rings against the cylinder walls, promoting proper ring seating and seal formation. The third major mistake many new car owners make is driving at constant RPM during highway trips. While highway driving isn't ideal during brake and due to steady state operation, it's still possible if managed properly. The key is avoiding cruise control and consciously varying your speed and RPM. Most manufacturers recommend keeping engine speeds below 4,000 RPM during the first 500 to 1,000 miles, with some enthusiasts extending this range to 5,000 RPM cautiously. More importantly, varying engine RPM is essential. Maintaining a constant RPM for extended periods prevents proper component seating, your engine benefits from regular shifts through all available gears, using a range of RPMs rather than a single speed. Practical strategies to avoid this mistake include changing speed every 10 to 15 minutes, shifting between gears regularly, strategically planning fuel stops to incorporate city driving, and taking scenic detours that include varied roads. For highway driving, changing between gears, for example, shifting between 5th and 6th every 10 miles can provide necessary variation. Many owners have reported taking new vehicles on 300 to 700 mile trips shortly after purchase without issues, provided they followed these variation principles. For turbocharged vehicles, keeping boost pressure minimal during break-in is recommended. Different driving modes like sport or manual shift mode can help facilitate RPM variations even during highway travel. Mistake number four is not understanding piston ring seating, perhaps the most critical aspect of the break-in process. Rings need to be expanded against the cylinder bore under load to ensure a good seal, which prevents blow-by and maintains proper compression. The seating process requires varying RPMs and engine loads, especially during the first few hours of operation. When rings seat correctly, they conform precisely to the cylinder walls, optimizing compression and minimizing oil consumption. Proper ring seating requires some degree of engine load. Simply revving an engine without load will not effectively seat the rings. Driving the engine under load creates the necessary combustion pressure that pushes rings against cylinder walls, which is essential for proper seating. Some experienced builders recommend a more specific approach, performing approximately 23rd gear pulls from 2,000 to 5,000 RPM and coasting down to 2,000 RPM before repeating. This technique focuses on controlled load cycles rather than simply varying RPMs within a narrow range. The load is more important than RPM for proper ring seating. The engine needs to work against resistance to properly seat components. This means applying moderate throttle, about 60 to 75%, at varying RPMs rather than constant light throttle. Mistake number five involves the extremes that can compromise proper engine break-in. One widespread myth is that extremely gentle driving throughout the break-in period is ideal, when in fact, varied driving conditions including moderate acceleration can be more beneficial for proper component seating. Occasional moderate acceleration is beneficial for break-in, but avoiding redlining and aggressive full throttle acceleration is universally recommended. Some performance engine builders report that after an initial period, often around 400 to 500 miles, they've successfully revved their engines to higher RPMs, up to 6,000 to 7,000 RPMs, without issues. This means that initial conservative running, followed by gradually increasing performance demands, works well for modern engines. 
On the extreme end of the spectrum, there's confusion about whether aggressive driving during break-in will necessarily damage an engine. While short periods of more spirited driving after proper warm-up are unlikely to cause catastrophic damage, full throttle acceleration and sustained high RPMs should still be avoided during the break-in period. Some drivers believe that simply revving an engine without load will break it in properly. This is completely false. The load is actually crucial for ring seating. The sixth mistake that can ruin your engine is neglecting temperature management. Heat management is crucial during break-in. In fact, this is even more important than RPM control. Proper break-in includes heat cycling, which allows the engine to reach full operating temperature and then cooling down completely. This process helps components expand and contract, aiding in their proper seating and alignment. Multiple heat cycles are often recommended during the early break-in phase. I suggest car owners taking the engine through three to five complete heat cycles before extending driving sessions. Preventing overheating is especially critical during break-in, as excessive heat can cause parts to expand beyond their design tolerances, potentially leading to damage. Always ensure the engine is fully warmed up before applying higher loads, and be particularly attentive to cooling system function during the break-in period. Avoiding high RPMs when the engine is cold is particularly emphasized, as this can cause excessive wear, letting the engine fully warm up before pushing it even moderately warm. Reaching normal operating temperature of around 190 degrees Fahrenheit is crucial during this period. You should avoid extended idling during the initial break-in period, as this can cause severe damage, such as flat camshafts, seized wrist pins, and spun bearings. My recommendation is running the engine at approximately 2,000 to 3,000 RPM for 20 to 30 minutes during initial break-in to ensure proper seating of rings and lubrication of components. The seventh mistake that many car owners make is ignoring early oil changes. Oil selection and maintenance are crucial during break-in. For rebuilt engines, I recommend conventional mineral oil during break-in rather than synthetic, as it helps with the initial wearing in process. A specialized break-in oil with higher zinc content also protects flat tappet camshafts and lifters during initial use. Early oil changes are essential. After initial break-in, commonly at 50 to 100 miles for rebuilds or 500 to 1,000 miles for new engines to remove metal particles and debris generated during the break-in process. This break-in oil change removes tiny metal fragments, sometimes called swarf, that result from initial component wear and silicon coatings from the manufacturing process. Beyond engine oil, I also suggest car owners change differential and transmission fluids early, around 1,000 miles, as these can also contain contamination from initial component wear. Now, let's talk about break-in procedures for new versus rebuilt engines. New engines often undergo some level of break-in at the factory, making them more resilient to immediate use. However, a certain level of caution is still recommended during the initial period. New engines generally benefit from varied speeds and loads, avoiding prolonged periods at the same RPM, and gradual introduction to higher performance. Rebuilt engines need more care than factory new ones. Different camshafts have different rules. Flat tappet cams need special break-in. Roller cams are more forgiving. Here's what to do. Prime the oil system before startup. Run a controlled break-in at moderate RPM, vary your speeds, and change the oil right after. Drive with varied RPMs and moderate loads to seat those rings properly. Your bore finish and ring type matter. Check with your machine shop for specific advice. Manufacturers have their own guidelines. Toyota and Subaru say, stay under 4,000 RPM for the first 1,000 miles. Kia recommends 600 miles between 2,000 to 4,000 RPM. WRX emphasizes varying RPM and avoiding heavy boost. If you've got mods, make sure you have proper tuning. For turbocharged engines, keep boost low during break-in. Performance engines have looser tolerances by design, which is why they might use more oil and sound a bit louder. Most factory engines need 500 to 1500 miles of break-in, with those first 50 to 100 miles being most important. Iron blocks typically need more attention than aluminum ones. Even Chevy limits revs on new Corvettes until 500 to 750 miles. They know what they're doing. You might be wondering why this break-in period matters so much. 
Well, the way you treat your engine during its first few hundred miles can impact its performance, efficiency, and lifespan for years to come. Proper ring seating prevents combustion gases from leaking past the rings and contaminating the oil, while the break-in process allows other moving parts throughout the engine to establish proper wear patterns and clearances. During initial operation, engine components generate significant wear debris as microscopic high spots are worn down and surfaces conform to each other, creating metal particles that circulate in the engine oil. If an engine has been properly broken in, the wear rate stabilizes at a much lower level after this initial period. By analyzing oil samples for metal content over time, one can scientifically determine whether an engine is still in its break-in phase or has already completed this process, as the concentration of wear metals will decrease significantly once break-in is complete. Improper break-in can result in issues like poor ring sealing, increased oil consumption, decreased engine performance, and premature wear over time. During this process, microscopic high spots on metal surfaces wear down to create optimal contact patterns, with building proper cylinder pressure being essential for this seating process. So, what's the bottom line for your vehicle? Whether you're driving a brand new car from the dealership or a freshly rebuilt engine, proper break-in matters. For new factory engines, vary your driving habits during the first 500 to 1,000 miles, avoid cruise control completely, and consider an early oil change regardless of what the dealer tells you. For rebuilt engines, follow your builder's specific instructions and be even more attentive to the process. Remember that different manufacturers have different recommendations. Toyota and Subaru suggest keeping RPMs below 4,000 during the first 1,000 miles. Kia recommends a 600-mile break-in period with RPMs between 2,000 and 4,000. Porsche advises not exceeding 4,000 RPM until the engine is warm and avoiding redline until 1,500 miles. These variations highlight the importance of checking your specific owner's manual. I'd love to hear your experiences with engine break-in. Did your dealership tell you break-in wasn't necessary? Have you noticed any performance differences based on how you broke in your engine? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.